Hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to go through the things that I did five weeks before the VC English exam and how you should be preparing for your VC exams. So a lot of the advice will be catered around VC English just because that is the first exam a lot of people do tend to take. However, I will be making references to the other VC subjects I took. So you can consider that advice and adjust it according to the subjects that you're doing this year. So I've created a five step process that you can take. Now, considering that we have around five weeks until the VC English exam, each step will take approximately a week. However, if you are watching this video a bit closer to the exam or even further back, then you can adjust the period of time that those steps take according to how much time you have left before the exams. So let's get straight into it. So step number one, identify your flaws. Now, the best way to spend your school holidays, especially the ones before term four, is to identify the gaps and weaknesses in your knowledge. So the way I spent my school holidays was by going through my previous SACs, identifying the topics or the areas of studies that I felt I was weakest in, and finding specific questions that I got low marks on, or I had highlighted or put a star around as being difficult. In the case of English, what I would do is I would go through the three main SACs that would correlate to the three sections in the English exam, which are text response, comparative, and argument analysis. I know that a lot of you uh, had your comparative SAC in the last week of school. So in that case, I would focus just on text response and uh, argument analysis for now and see which one I am stronger at or weaker at. You want to start with the section that you are weaker at, just because it will take you longer time to actually gather resources, find the right information and make adjustments as to how you're attacking that section. For other subjects, such as maths and science, this is a bit easier because a lot of the SACs you do or a lot of assessments that you've done tend to be separated into topics anyway. So using the marks that you got for each SAC or assessment, see which topics that you need to improve on and then find online resources or materials from your teacher or even the VC Checkpoints book and try to work on questions that target that topic. For subjects that are more content heavy, such as humanities, it's very similar to what I've said with maths and science. Try to find questions, preferably exam style questions, considering that humanity subjects are a bit more short answer based or essay based and try to write practice responses to them. Now, it doesn't have to be long essays. It, you can just start off with dot points. Just test your understanding and how much you know about that topic so that you can find out which part of that unit or that area of study you need to re reconsolidate your knowledge in. The point of this first step, which preferably would be done during the school holidays, is to identify your flaws. So don't overdo it with doing the practice or revising your notes or memorizing stuff. Focus on knowing what you don't know. Step two, try a full exam. Attempt one VCA exam for all of your VC subjects during the school holidays. Not only will this be a good indicator of how much you know for unit three and four, but it will also open your eyes as to what kind of exam techniques and specific skill sets that you need to actually answer the questions. For example, for English, you'll get a glimpse of how much time you need to spend in specific sections, what sections you're spending too much time on, and whether or not the introduction, the body paragraph or the conclusion is the component that takes away the most time out of your writing time. For other subjects such as maths and science, the exam techniques that you might need would be to be able to switch your thinking process. The questions don't come out in area of study order or unit order. They will be jumbled up and they will also have a mixture of different types of questions. You'll probably know that the first section is multiple choice and the second section is short answer. Furthermore, for maths, you need to practice how to actually write your working out and present your ideas on paper because examiners require certain ways for you to actually write your answer in order for you to get that mark. Now, the only way to test which types of questions you need to work um, on would be by actually doing the questions and giving them to your examiner or your tutor and getting them to read 
and seeing whether or not that is the best way to present your answer. For other subjects such as humanities or content subjects, exams can be a really helpful way for you to combine all your information together. For example, as someone who's done legal studies and history revolutions, I know that the exams were really helpful for me to glue all my content together and I became more flexible and comfortable with putting content from unit three with content from unit four and gluing it together in the same response. An important thing to note though is to not do these exams under exam conditions. So just use these VCA exams more as an indicator of how much you know and what specific exam techniques you need to focus on. Step three. Focus on content. Now that you're aware of the gaps in your knowledge, as well as the exam skills that you require to improve on, now you need to work on actually reconsolidating both of them. So when you actually start term four, I know you're going to get a lot of supplementary exam prep and revision material, but the important thing and the thing that high scorers do is do exam preparation in the background in their own time. Don't just rely on your school to take you to where you want. You need to push further if you want to get higher than what you're expecting. So I know that in 2021, because of COVID, the GAT has been pushed to the first week of school on October 5th. So probably take out the Sunday and the Monday of that first week just to revise over some GAT preparation. So you might want to have a look at the writing prompts that came out or just have a read through the different multiple choice questions and get a feel of what to expect on the day. So for the rest of that week, you want to focus on finalizing your revision. Now you can revise for content through two main ways. The first way is by doing a lot of application questions. Now this might just be revision questions that your teacher gave you or other online resources or materials that you can find to help you aid in recalling and making sure that you understand the concepts of that specific area of study. The second thing you can do is to finalize notes the flashcards, the reference notes that you've made to make sure that you have some sort of paperback reference to go back to if you wanted to reconsolidate the foundation of your knowledge. Really, really important thing I want you to know is that for English, do not just read over the notes that you made over the year. Write the prompt in the center of a page on your laptop or on an A4 piece of paper and brainstorm as many different pieces of evidence that connect to that prompt. Now, this evidence would consist of things like quotes, symbols, structural features, as well as authorial intent. So after you've created that brainstorm, what I want you to do is cull out pieces of evidence that you think you won't be able to memorize or you think is too commonly used. This will ensure that the evidence that you memorize for that specific prompt or theme will be unique and will be something that will be strongly marked against other students. I want you to do this brainstorm for at least five to 10 different prompts that you can find. Each brainstorm should take around 30 minutes and it is okay for you to look at notes. What about for maths and science subjects? So for your math subjects, I know that you need your references. It's really easy to fall into the habit of just writing notes and not actually doing any active revision in the process. How I created my reference notes was by actually going through all of the VCA exams from 2009 to 2019 and cutting out the questions that I couldn't solve. And then I grouped the questions that I cut out all into its area of studies and then stuck them into the book in order of the topics that I learned at school. Now, realistically, when you get into your maths exam, you don't have time to look through your notes. So I think it was a really helpful exercise to actually actively look for questions that I was struggling with and also kind of gave me a sense of satisfaction in that I was filling this book out with all these different questions, which now I had an idea of how to actually uh, approach. So for those questions that you can do and those topics that you can improve in, try to spend your time actually doing questions and, and understanding how to do the topic by yourself rather than just wasting your time making notes on it. It's very similar for science subjects. If you have workbooks that are categorized by topics, such as the checkpoints, then I strongly recommend you go through the questions of specific topics that you struggle with, rather than aimlessly just reattempting a range of different type of uh, exam questions and not getting anywhere. For humanities or content subjects, it's very similar. 
at the end of the day, I think you kind of have to make notes for these kind of subjects. But what I want you to do parallel to note making is doing those application questions and making sure that you are able to recall that information and that you're only focusing your time and energy towards the questions that you struggle with rather than the ones that you can do already. Step four, start from small and then build to big. So what I mean by start small is I want you to start with single questions, small sections of exams, and then slowly build your way up to complete essays, the whole exam, and then ultimately doing those exams under timed conditions. So in the case of English, the reason I told you to start with planning and brainstorming all of your ideas, your evidence and your arguments is that this creates a foundation for you to actually start writing. So first thing I would do is plan and then introduction in 15 minutes. And then I would stretch myself out to plan, introduction and a few body paragraphs. Ultimately, you would try to do a plan, introduction, three body paragraphs and your conclusion all in around an hour and a half. And then I slowly reduce the timer to an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes and finally just one hour. Once you've done at least two to three full essays in one hour for each section, that's when you're ready to finally do a full three hour exam. And we're going to come to that step later. For your maths and science subjects, you want to understand how much time you want to spend for each section of the exam. You can do multiple choice when you don't want to do too much, but still want to test your knowledge and how much you know. And you can do section B when you haven't done too much in a day and that you feel like you can push yourself a bit more. But of course, the important thing is to go back to that exam, correct your answers and see how many you got right. Now, I want you to look out for two things here. I want you to not only identify the gaps that still remain in your knowledge, but also look out for the types of questions you get wrong. Now, this is really relevant for the humanity and content subjects, especially because there are, you know, two markers, four markers, five markers, up to 10 markers. You need to be aware of how to actually structure your answer and which action words to look out for. So all of those words like discuss, evaluate, define, outline, etc., etc. And finally, get a gauge of how much to write for questions with a specific number of marks and what exactly to write, what exactly the question is asking you to do. So actually understanding the exam techniques and being able to quickly identify what the question is asking you to do is the main thing that you want to do for the humanities and content style exam questions. And finally, we are at step five. Refine, refine, refine. Now, when you get to the last week of your exam preparation, all you can really do is to polish what you kind of know and make silly mistakes on rather than attempting to learn things you definitely don't know or have been struggling for for a while. So this would be a really good opportunity for you to look through the progress that you've achieved over the year and how much you've actually improved. Not only is this a really good confidence booster before the exams, but it also makes sure that all of the gaps you identified in the school holidays have been filled up through revision. For English, this would look like uh, going through those past essays that you've written, looking at the feedback that you've got from, me, from your teachers and finally creating a order in which you want to do the exam. I would suggest you attempt section C first and then go to section A, section B, just because most people tend to find section C, which is the argument analysis, the easiest, and it takes less amount of time in comparison to the two sections that require previous knowledge. After you've read through all of your past essays, it's time to just work on time management only. So you want to start doing specific sections in one hour periods of time and see whether or not you can really finish doing your essays. Because at the end of the day, you can have all the content, but if you don't write it in paper in time, then there's no use. For subjects such as maths and science, the main things that you want to do is you want to track your progress in terms of the marks that you're getting. Last year, I created a table of um, whether or not my marks were improving with the practice exams that I was doing. I did improve to a certain extent, but then I plateaued. And I want to tell you that that is completely normal. Don't expect yourself to improve with every exam, especially because different years have different difficulties of exams. 
Something that might be useful for you to track how well you're doing in comparison to your cohort is uh, to look at the grade distributions of the VCA exam that you did. So pretty much on Google, search up VCA, your subject, the year of that exam and grade distributions. And it will give you a page of tables and graphs such as this. You can look at what the mean or the median mark was and get an idea of how well you're doing in comparison to other people of your year level. Now, the difficult one is humanities and content subjects. Just because the questions are usually globally marked and it's really difficult for the student to get an idea of whether or not they're writing their answers and structuring their responses in the right way, what I strongly recommend is to try to find as many online materials that have high scoring responses to specific questions. Have a look at the different ways that different people structure their responses and try to tune and adjust how you word your sentences according to those paragraphs. Okay, so those were the five steps. So to summarize, first step is to identify your weaknesses and gaps in your knowledge. Second step is to attempt at least one VCA exam for each of your subjects. Third step is to finalize your content revision and creation of notes and flashcards. Fourth step is start by practicing small and then build up to big. Finally, last step is to reflect and refine. I'd like to end on a note that emphasizes the importance of mental and emotional health, especially during exam season. It's really common for students to start feeling anxious or worried that they don't have enough time. Now, I'm going to tell you as someone who's done VC, there is still completely enough time for you to improve. Even one day, one hour before an exam can change your exam results. Something that really helped me was to visualize how I was going to sit an exam. I'm sure you guys know where you're going to be sitting your exams. So try to spend some time closing your eyes, imagining yourself in that study hall or room and thinking about what order you're going to do things. Are you going to put your water bottle down? Are you going to put your watch off and put it on the table? Are you going to take your blazer on or off? Try to visualize your environment around you and what specific order you're going to attempt each exam. By having a step-by-step -step process to do things, it makes things much more objective and therefore less prone to being swayed by the emotions or the situations that you might encounter before the exam. Like I said, there is still enough time. It is never too late to improve and I want you to remind yourself that every day as well. Best of luck guys and I'll see you on the other side.